So the update to the Link 2013 client taking us to the Skype for Business skin has been released. So I thought we'd have a look at the experience of what happens when you update and what the first run experience is and also how to change between the skins. So my test machine here is Windows 8.1. I'm logged into a Link 2013 back end using a Link 2013 client. So let's run the patch and we'll, we'll see what happens. So I've downloaded it already. It's here. So let's let it run. There we go, so let's just let that finish. There we go, now that's done. Um, it's asking for a reboot, so let's reboot and we'll come back and have a look and see what it does. So there we go, it's rebooted. Let's get logged in. We'll just watch the experience. you'll see that it's actually the Skype for Business first run experience. Now, because we're currently um, registered to a 2013 backend, you'll see that we're getting a message saying, you have the newer version of Link called Skype for Business. However, your admin would like you to use the Link client. So what we have to do is restart the client and when it restarts it will be in the Link 2013 skin. So let's hit that restart. And there we are, we're back to the Link 2013 experience. Now fortunately there is a way to control that first run experience just to make it a little bit simpler for your users. So let's have a look at that. So what I'm going to do is just roll this machine back to pre the installation of the Skype for Business uh, client and then we'll look at uh, the changes we can do just to change that first run experience. So I've rolled back this machine so we're back just to the pure Link 2013 client. Now before I install the Skype for a Business update I'm going to set a registry key first. So let's jump into the registry editor. If only I could spell. Let's try that again. Okay, I'm going to go to hotkey current user, software, Microsoft, office, and then link. And in there, I'm going to create a binary value called enable Skype. UI. Okay, now the value is just going to be four sets of double zeros. Like that. So it should appear as four sets of zeros. So now let's install the client again and we'll see the effect that has on the first uh, run experience. So I'm just going to reinstall the um, Skype for Business patch. There we go, let's just let that finish. There we go, that's finished. So let's reboot and we'll have a look at that first run experience. So the machine's rebooted, let's log in. We'll have a look at that first run experience again. Um, now this has that registry key set. And there we go, you can see it's straight into that Link 2013 um, user interface. Now what's interesting, just by changing that, um, that registry key and changing it to something else, doesn't automatically enable the Skype user interface. You're, you're still reliant on those client policies. So to show you what I mean, let's fire up the registry editor. I'm going to go to the same place, so hotkey current user, software, Microsoft, Office, Link. I'm going to change that 
enable Skype UI, we'll just change it to um, another value. Doesn't seem to matter which one you change, by the way, from what I can tell. Now what I'm going to do is just restart the link client. There we go, so let's fire it up again. Skype for Business 2015. You'll see the Skype experience. And there we go. Now, because we're connecting to a 2013 back end, and that 2013 back end currently has the client policy set, so we're still using the 2013 client, I get told that you know, I need to restart the client because the administrator wants us to use the Link 2013 skin. So if I do that now, it'll sign out, restart, come back as the 2013 client. There we go. And if we look at that registry entry, just refresh it. There we go. And you'll see it's back to zero. So um, if you want to use the Skype for Business um, skin you can but you have to have the right CU on the back end and you have to set those client policies appropriately anyway I hope you found that vaguely useful